Time now for our series Mornings Mixtape, where we highlight nostalgic musicians and songs we just can't get out of our heads. Today, we're talking to singer-songwriter James Blunt. He's marking the 20th anniversary of his first album this year. Listen. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. It's true. We're all singing it at a very high pitch that only birds can hear. Blunt uh, catapulted the fame with the release of his album, Back to Bedlam, which included chart-topping hits like the one you're listening to now, You're Beautiful, and Goodbye, My Lover. Now, the five-time Grammy nominee is back with his seventh studio album, perhaps his most personal one yet, and he kicks off his European tour today. Christina Ruffini spent a day with James Blunt in New York City, where he revealed a side of himself we rarely see. James Blunt has performed to sold-out crowds all over the world. When was the last time you were in New York? Ooh, I can't remember. It was a little while ago, before the pandemic, I think. But when he's in the U.S., the British-born Blunt has a very American obsession. Are you scared? Yes. Really spicy hot wings. A little bit of pain in your life is good. Maybe that's because over the past two decades, Blunt, who cheekily calls himself a minor pop star, has gotten used to taking heat both about himself Without you on my body, I'm sorry, I'm and his music. Well, I thought I'd be a rock star playing rock songs with big hair and electric guitar and a band, but you really need friends to form a band, and I've ended up really with an acoustic guitar in hand writing miserable songs. Beautiful doll. But Blunt made bank off that misery. His first record, 2004's Back to Bedlam, was one of the biggest selling albums of the decade. With its now infamous single, You're Beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Reaching number one in 10 countries and seven on Rolling Stone's list of most annoying songs. I don't quite understand the hate. It seems like it's, at one point, it was just something that people did for sport. I think the song was played so much um, with such ubiquity that eventually, you know, some people are going to say, look, I'm just tired of, of that song and, uh, and, you know, and I get that. But it's just a really great commercial success yeah. for me. Um, and that commercial success comes at a little bit of a cost that some people have overheard it. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. You have Part of the problem, he says, was people taking him much more seriously than he's ever taken himself. Is it true that the original words to goodbye my lover were goodbye my liver? <laughs> Obviously, yes. And that you're beautiful was originally these drugs are brilliant, these drugs are pure. I saw an angel of that, I'm sure. Totally, yeah, correct. She could see from my face that I was flying high. And you're beautiful is I'm a guy who's high stalking someone else's girlfriend on the underground, and that guy is me. This is a guy who needs to be locked up and arrested and put away for everyone else's safety. His new book, a memoir, and his recent documentary, One Brit Wonder, All I need to do now is die, and this documentary's gonna go through the roof. are laced with Blunt's signature self-effacing humor, as well as tales from an unexpected life. A pint of fox affairs. From owning a West London pub, to his accidental friendship with the late great Carrie Fisher and his time in the British Army, where he once served alongside Prince Harry. Let me show you around the vehicle. And even won a bravery medal for helping de-escalate a potential conflict with Russia during the Kosovo War. Did you, James Blunt, stop World War III? Yes, I did. Okay, great, that's it, I have no more questions. Yeah. But as all young soldiers and pop stars must, Blunt grew up, and so did his music. We're just My place in the world has changed. Like my parents are getting old, I'm married, and I've got young children, and so my concerns, my fears in life aren't for me. But some things you just don't get to decide. He talks about the realization of one of those fears, pregnancy loss. When I look back, I'm not even sure that. In his new studio album, in a heartbreaking track called The Girl. That never was. Somewhere, she's probably dancing with her blonde hair. I'm wondering, how you first showed it or played it for your wife? Uh, yeah, uh, very tough moments, really. Um, I suppose with all the songs I write, to, when I bring them back home, it's a nerve-wracking moment. And obviously that was, you know, quite a tearful moment for us. The album also includes meditations on midlife monotony and missed opportunities. I wish that you had 
I'd call somebody. People are really great at writing songs about fast cars and, uh, and expensive jewellery, and I just don't do that very well. Um, I write songs about pretty uncool things, about what it is that n normal everyday people deal with. Darling, I know we talked about you once. And when he has to deal with less normal things, like some very public haters, he approaches it all with the usual blunt wit. I'm a musician. I'm not a doctor and a nurse. I'm not saving the world. And if you get cut down a little bit occasionally, that's only a healthy thing. If you could flip a switch and have your music career without being famous, would you make that choice? Yeah, it's a good question, isn't it, really? I mean, I've had great fun along the way. My ambition and aim, really, in the first place, was just to be allowed to get into nightclubs for free. I think I achieved that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I've had a real blast with it. It's been great, great fun. I All I know is I want to get that album right away, Who We Used To Be. That song, You're Beautiful, I always was drawn from the first lyrics. Yeah. My yeah. life is brilliant, my love is pure. I saw an angel of that, I'm sure. I just thought it was such a pretty lyric and made me want to know what's going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. the, his voice is so ethereal. And the other thing that I, I wonder if a lot of the uh, hate that he does get from critics is because his music cuts very close to the bone. Oftentimes, you don't want music to strike you right here in your heart and your soul. And when it does, you, you tend to sort of push it away. I think he was onto something, though, Vlad, where he said they just played it so much, people got sick of it. Yeah. But I always like that song, and like him, Never too. Never gets old to me, yeah. No, me neither. Right? It's just like you can listen to it like you're hearing it for the first time. Congrats, James. Congrats. Mm.